Intel's new Z890 chipset is here, bringing significant changes to the memory landscape. Whether you're an experienced builder or new to PC hardware, understanding Z890, CU DIMM and CAM2 is important for making informed decisions about your next system. In this video, we're examining Intel's Z890 chipset and the new memory technologies that it supports. We'll cover what's new, what's changed, and the implications for gaming and productivity. From increased bandwidth to new form factors, we're looking at all the key aspects. But before we get into that, here's a quick word from this video sponsor. <sighs> I'm never gonna be an esports gamer. I never get any kills. I wouldn't be so sure of that. Is that Andy Raffel from eTechnics.com? Yes, my son, it is me, Andy Raffel from eTechnics.com. What are you doing here? I'm here to bestow upon you a gift that will transform you into a true gamer. With a 24.5 inch full HD screen, 240 hertz refresh rate, 0.5 millisecond response time, AMD FreeSync Premium, and height adjustability, you'll be gaming in the big leagues in no time. Oh, thank you. No problem, my son. Why don't you check out the link in the description below to find out more. So let's start with the simple stuff. The Z890 chipset is designed to work with Intel's new Arrow Lake S processors, offering several improvements over its predecessors, including one significant change to the PCIe lane configuration. Therefore, Z890 supports PCIe 5.0 through more lanes for both high-speed storage and graphics. This then, in turn, allows for full-speed GPU operation while maintaining bandwidth for fast NVMe SSDs through this PCIe 5.0 support. Though it isn't actually about current hardware, as no current consumer GPU actually supports it. Instead, it's looking ahead to next-generation architectures like RDNA 4 from AMD and Blackwell from Nvidia, which are expected to potentially offer PCIe 5.0 support. This means your Z890 board could be ready for whatever high-performance GPUs the future holds. On top of this, USB and Thunderbolt support has also been improved as Z890 offers more high-speed USB ports, including USB 4, which can reach speeds of up to 40 gigabits per second. This increased throughput can be particularly beneficial for content creators and professionals working with large files. I mean, imagine transferring a 100 gig video file in minutes rather than hours. That's the kind of improvement that we're talking about here. There's also new networking capabilities, which have been significantly enhanced on Z890. So, Wi-Fi 7, not just 6E, offering a substantial leap in wireless performance. This again, being a new standard, promises even higher speeds, lower latency and improved performance in congested areas for those who do not maybe have the ability to use ethernet. For both competitive gamers concerned about low ping times and professionals handling large network transfers, this could be an absolute game changer. But there's something else that's gonna come with these boards that's gonna be kind of even more of a game changer. And that's diving deep into the memory, and more specifically, CU DIMM technology. Now, CU DIMM stands for Clocked Unbuffered Dual Inline Memory Modules, and it's introducing some interesting changes to the RAM. The key feature of CU DIMM is its potential to increase capacity and possibly lower cost without compromising on performance. CU DIMMs include their own clock chip called the CKD, or CU DIMM clock, instead of relying on the motherboard for the clock signal. This allows for higher capacity modules without expensive buffering techniques, potentially enabling more RAM in a system at a lower cost. To put this into perspective, while current consumer platforms typically max out at 128 gig of RAM, CU DIMM technology could potentially push this limit much higher, but this will depend on the platform specifically. However, the implementation of CU DIMM support varies between platforms as, while Intel's Z890 fully supports it, the situation is well, slightly different for AMD systems. It's important to note that for Ryzen systems, CU DIMM support is more tolerated than fully supported. AMD has added the ability to run in a bypass mode to prevent a no-post situation when CU DIMMs are used, but it's not optimized for these modules. And this means that while AMD users can use CU DIMM modules, they might not get the full performance benefits that Intel users kind of would. Though, interestingly, well, this limitation may not significantly impact current Ryzen systems. The Integrated On-Die Memory Controller, or IOD, for Zen 4 and Zen 5 only supports memory speeds up to 6,000 MHz in a one-to-one -one ratio with the Infinity Fabric. And as such, higher speeds would likely offer diminishing returns for most users. This is a classic case of one part of the system architecture limiting the potential of another. A reminder that PC performance is always about balance and synergy between components. And it's worth mentioning that future architectures like Zen 6 may feature a new IOD, and this could potentially bring benefits for memory support, including better compatibility with technologies like CU DIMMs. 
So let's break this down as to what it means in practical terms. Well, for an Intel Z890 system, you might be able to push your memory speeds well beyond 7,000 megahertz, given that Arrow Lake S already officially supports up to DDR5 6400. So good news there. High-end boards and premium memory kits could potentially reach even higher speeds though, opening up kind of new possibilities for enthusiasts and overclockers. On an AMD system, you'd be able to use the higher capacity CU DIMM modules, but you would be limited to around 6,000 to maybe even 6,400 megahertz for optimal performance. And while for most users, especially gamers, this difference might not be noticeable in day-to-day -day use, Intel, well, they can go much higher. Then there's CAM2, or Compression Attached Memory Module 2, and this is another notable development. It's particularly relevant for laptop users and small form factor desktop builders alike, and we saw this for the first time at Computex. Now CAM2 aims to replace traditional SODIMs in mobile devices, offering better space efficiency and performance. The primary advantage of it is, well, really it's compact size and potential for improved signal integrity. These modules can fit more memory into a smaller area, which is crucial for thin and light laptops. They also promise better performance and power efficiency. And to give you an idea of the scale that we're actually talking about, a CAM2 module could potentially offer the same or higher capacity as a traditional SODIM, while taking up significantly less space. Think about 60% smaller or so. This space saving might seem trivial, but in the world of laptop design, every millimeter counts. And smaller memory modules could allow for better cooling solutions, larger batteries, or just simply thinner and lighter devices overall. Then for desktop users, particularly those in kind of interested in small form factor builds, CAM2 could enable high performance systems in incredibly compact cases. It's also gaining traction in the industry, albeit slowly, but we're already seeing some support in the consumer space. For example, the MSI Z790 Project Zero Plus motherboard supports CAM2 modules, but this board is actually currently unavailable to be purchased. But this is a sign that industry adoption is growing and we can expect to see more CAM2 compatible products in the future. However, there are challenges to overcome. The proprietary nature of the initial CAM design raised concerns about vendor lock-in. The industry is you know, working towards standardization, which would be crucial for widespread adoption, but it still has well, a way to go. Now regarding memory support, the Z890 chipset is expected to handle DDR5 speeds well beyond 7,000 megahertz for overclocking, with high-end boards potentially reaching even higher. And it's equipped, or at least ready to go, to take advantage of both CU DIMM and CAM2 technologies. For enthusiasts and overclockers, this means more room for pushing memory performance as XMP profiles are also becoming more sophisticated, simplifying the process of optimizing speed and also stability. To put these speeds into context, consider that DDR4 typically maxed out around 3200 to 4000 megahertz for most users. The jump to 7000 megahertz and beyond with DDR5 represents a significant leap in potential bandwidth. I guess in real world terms, this could translate to faster load times in games, smoother performance when working with large data sets, and generally more responsive system performance, especially in memory intensive tasks. Then there's ECC support, which is traditionally more common in server and workstation setups, but is also increasingly available in high-end consumer platforms, including Z890, and is a welcome addition for professionals requiring enhanced data integrity. ECC memory can detect and correct certain types of data corruption, which is crucial in scenarios where even a single bit error could have significant consequences. Think financial calculations, scientific simulations, or critical database operations. For system builders, the Z890 platform does offer some compelling features. Its improved PCIe layout, advanced memory support, and enhanced connectivity makes it a solid foundation for high performance systems. However, those considering an upgrade should weigh the benefits carefully, especially if they're using a fairly recent system. It's worth noting that there's currently no confirmation on whether Z890 will support more generations beyond Arrow Lake S, and this means it could potentially be a one generation only motherboard. For individuals, this is an important consideration when weighing the long-term value of investing in this platform, because is it gonna have this new technology? Are you gonna buy this new memory and then it's just, well, obsolete? It's a bit of a tricky one. Let's break this down with kind of a practical example. If you're currently running a system with a Z690 or Z790 chipset, the upgrade to Z890 might not offer a night and day difference in most scenarios. You'd see improvements, of course, in memory support and potentially in IO capabilities, but these might not translate to significant real world performance gains in many applications. On the other hand, if you're coming from an older platform, say Z390 or earlier, the cumulative improvements in PCIe lanes, memory technology, and overall system bandwidth could result in noticeably more responsive and capable systems. 
Compatibility, I guess, is the important consideration. As while CU DIMM is designed to be backward compatible with standard DIMM slots, full benefits require a motherboard with specific support. CAM2, being a new form factor, will necessitate new hardware across the board, and this could end up being expensive, and means that for early adopters, there might be a higher initial cost and potentially limited options. However, as with most new technologies, we can expect prices to normalize and options to expand as adoption increases. Performance expectations are still theoretical at this point, but the combination of PCIe 5.0, high-speed DDR5, and, well, technologies like CUDIM could lead to noticeable improvements in areas like load times and performance in memory intensive applications. However, real world impact will vary depending on specific use cases. For me, as a gamer, and for all of you gamers out there, the benefits might be most, let's say, noticeable in CPU bound scenarios or in games that load large amounts of data. Strategy games with large maps, open world games with minimal loading screens, or simulation games with complex calculations might see the most improvement. However, for many current games, especially if you're playing at high resolutions where the GPU is the primary bottleneck, the differences might be subtle. On the flip side, content creators and professionals, again like us, might see more significant benefits. Tasks like video editing, 3D rendering, or working with large data sets could see substantial improvements in processing times. And then the increased memory capacity offered by CUDIM could be particularly beneficial for tasks that require holding large amounts of data in the RAM, such as complex scientific simulations or working with high resolution media files. So looking ahead, the Z890 chipset, along with CU DIMM and CAM2 technologies, appears to be laying the groundwork for future PC performance advancements. As software demands increase, these technologies provide room for meeting those needs, and we're well, likely to see more applications taking advantage of high memory bandwidth and capacity, particularly with AI and machine learning capabilities, as they become more integrated into consumer software. It's also worth considering the potential impact on the broader PC market, as high-end features like those offered by Z890 become more common, and we often see it trickle down to mid-range and budget options. Technologies that seem cutting edge and expensive today could become standard in a few years, driving overall performance improvements across the board. In conclusion, the Z890 chipset combined with new memory technologies like CUDIM and CAM2 represents a notable step forward in PC architecture and looks to be worth considering for high-end system builds or demanding professional environments. For gamers, the decision depends on your current setup and performance needs, but if you're already running a recent high-end system, the benefits just might not justify an immediate upgrade. But if you're building from scratch or upgrading from an older platform, Z890 gives you a robust foundation to build on albeit with the caveat that it might only support one generation of processors. And remember, we will have benchmarks in a few days so you can see what that is all about. Though, as we know, that's more down to the processor than the motherboard itself, though memory should come into play. Looking at it from face value, seems that content creators and professionals working with kind of the types of data that they do may see the most significant benefits from these advancements. The combination of increased memory capacity, higher bandwidth, improved IO, could actually translate to real productivity gains in memory intensive workloads. Though, as with any new technology, it's important to approach these advancements with a balanced perspective. While the potential benefits are significant, they need to be weighed against factors like cost, compatibility with existing hardware, and your specific use case. It's always wise to wait for independent benchmarks and real world performance data before making any decision. And well, it's only a few days away, so I'm sure you can wait. So there you go, that covers our overview of Intel's Z890 chipset and the new memory technologies that it supports. Remember, this information is based on, I guess what I can tell you and early details and may change when we do our hands-on testing. As always, it's crucial to do your own research and consider your specific needs when making hardware decisions. Now, if you found this helpful, a like and a sub to the channel would be amazing. And if you love what we do, consider supporting us over on Patreon, where you'll get access to a whole host of goodies, including behind the scenes content, access to our testing data, bi-weekly game nights, meetups at our offices, and much, much more. The link is, as always, down below. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.